so a very good evening to one and all uh, myself aditya jain and today i'm going to speak about the strategy that one should follow for attempting the programming and data structure subject in the gate uh, paper okay so yeah let's get started uh, is my screen visible okay thanks for confirming so at any point of time if you have any uh, query Uh, you can just uh, unmute yourself and let me know or just write it down in the chat section so i'll answer them for you okay so yeah let's get started okay so so i believe that any entrance exam not just gate any entrance exam is based on lots of factors among which one of the major factor is plan planning or scheduling okay so this is the quote that i myself believe a lot in which is failing to plan is planning to fail so it means that if you are failing to plan like if you are not able or if you are unable to plan your schedule or make a timetable or make a routine then somewhat what you are doing is you are planning to fail because as you might have heard that it's not just about studies and just remembering things but it's about consistency right so in any field if you can see if a batsman scores 100 in one match and consistently zero in 10 match so we do not uh, take that factors into consideration right what we want is a consistent effort and consistent performance so that's what is the most important when it comes to cracking the gate exam or any other entrance exam so that's why just remember that failing to plan is same as planning to fail okay so this is why planning is very important and with the help of this session will understand how to plan and how to make a schedule for the programming and data structure subject okay so yeah is it clear means is the voice clear okay great thank you so yeah let's continue so these are some of the topics that i am going to cover which is why should you listen to me approach towards the subject resources for the subject list of various topics types of problems asked in this particular topic and particular subject number of problems that you need to solve various strategies to attempt uh, this subject and finally how to attempt the in the actual gate exam so as i have gone through each and every stage of this i will be a better person to help you understand what you should do okay because i believe that understanding and planning your schedule is equally important as studying a particular subject okay so let's first understand why should you listen to me okay so these are the various things that i would like to mention so i have been a google dsc college representative during my bachelors and uh, at the end of four years i have scored a gpa of 9.01 during my btech which was in computer science my current gpa is of 9.14 uh, which is uh, uh, the mtech gpa and i was also one among the two students to get a six months internship at amazon during my bachelors which is in the third uh, which is in the seventh semester of my btech and i got placed at barclays on day one during my bachelors but yeah that was a different story which i am going to explain you so but all of these are not that important from the from what i can help you with right so for you how i can be helpful is because of this so along with all those activities during my bachelors i gave gate exam in my final year and i secured an all india rank of 60 in my gate exam and that was my first attempt because at that time gate uh, you can only attempt gate in your final year means at least when you are in final year then you can attempt it many times okay so this is the most important factor which i want to help you understand like how i managed all of these activities along with getting a good uh, getting good company during my placements along with a, a great rank in gate exam okay so these are the factors that uh, today's conversation will revolve around and uh, the subject that we are talking about would be programming and data structures so yeah so someone of you can just uh, mention that is it uh, okay or not like the video and audio everything good like the screen is getting shared okay great yeah so let's continue so first of all uh, the the important point that i mentioned all of this is you will see one thing in common among getting placed in a good company and getting a good rank in gate exam and that's it and that is performing great and being good at programming and data structures okay so very few people are aware of this concept 
that data structures doesn't only help you while preparing for the gate exam but it is equally important from the placements point of view as well be it btech or be it, it during your mtech that is when you have appeared for gate and yeah and when you have joined certain colleges and then you are preparing for the placement then also data structures and programming will be of great help to you believe me i have gone through each of the series of placements and everything and now i can tell you that this is one of the most important subject that you should be focusing on not just point of uh, not just point of the gate and not just from the point of view of getting placed but in but as a computer science student in general okay so let's understand so this is the toppers mentality so let's see how many of you can answer this so suppose uh, okay so first of all i'd like to mention that in uh, that when i attempted gate in my final year i i secured uh, means uh, i attempted all the questions in programming in data structures and i did only one incorrect which was of one mark okay rest of uh, rest uh, rest questions i have solved correctly and got full marks in them so this is my question to you suppose this came for 20 marks in the actual gate exam and i made one one mark question incorrect okay that is minus of 0.33 marks so how many marks i have lost when i have solved this incorrectly this one mark question incorrectly can anyone tell uh, can anyone any one of you tell me in the chat section just have a look at this question that i'm proposing you to answer 1.33 exactly so this is how you should be thinking lots of people have this perception that when you make a certain question incorrect you have just lost, uh, lost 0.33 marks and that's not a big deal but what you should understand is from the toppers mentality suppose you make one answer incorrect it's not just that you have lost the negative marks but you have also lost the marks that you have made while making it correctly right and that's the most important thing so from 20 i have not just lost 0.33 marks but 1.33 marks right and that and that makes a huge difference so just to tell you like just to tell you so that you can relate how much these marks matters is so my all inter rank was 60 as i mentioned and my marks were 77.33 right and there's a person who got 78 marks right 78 marks and his all inter rank was around 40 okay so that's the major difference that these marks cost you okay so this is just 60 and 40 not a big difference you can get the same college but what if it is 198 or 190 then it can make a huge difference of shifting you from iit bombay to some other iits or some other nits as well so so i have not mentioned here because i have wanted to explain you this thing so currently i'm pursuing my masters in computer science from iit bombay and yeah so this is this has been my journey like btech mtech each and everything then i appeared for gate then during my internship uh, gate results were announced and then i decided to pursue higher studies as i was getting the college of my choice which was iit bombay so this is the entire journey that i have gone through and that's why i'm sharing my experience with you pertaining to the programming and data structures topic okay so that's why i believe that this is one of the most important topic that one should be thorough with or one should be good at okay so yeah you have answered this correctly i've lost 1.33 marks and as you can see 1.33 marks can cost you lots of sleepless nights right because if your rank should have been 80 it would give you 120 rank and that's a huge difference so this is how you should always this is what you should always keep in mind that just attempting a question is not sufficient you need to attempt it correctly okay and that that what you get from practicing and making a proper schedule or planning okay so yeah so let's come to the approach towards the subject so as we are talking about programming and data structures or in general any subject division of subject can be made on two bases based on weightage and based on personal strength okay so so what what i'm trying to tell you is either you can uh, if you pick a particular subject either you can weight or either you can plan it on the basis of the weightage and on the basis of the personal strength so personal strength refers to there are 10 topics in a particular subject and you are comfortable with five of five of them and you are not comfortable with the remaining five but what if the topics that you are not comfortable with are very highly weighted in gate exam so so you can't make an excuse right they will not ask you whether you were comfortable with that subject or not all you need to care about is are you getting the marks in that particular subject or not 
it doesn't matter whether it is easier for you or it is tough for you you need to make sure that you score the maximum marks and get the college of your choice and that's why planning is very important you should not always prefer the personal strength based subject but you should also focus on the weightage and the importance that the gate exam gives to a particular subject okay so yeah based on weightage i have written tentative in the bracket because you cannot decide the weightage of a particular subject uh, before attempting the gate exam i can tell you various strategies that yeah this is uh, mostly ours on the basis of our previous questions but what if someone ask you a a different question which was belonging to the least weightage topic but it came in that particular exam right so this is how i'm asking you to think from the topper's point of view like if you are aiming to get uh, to get under 100 rank or something like that you can't just miss on any topic each and every topic should be of equal importance to you why because suppose you have marked a particular subject a particular topic into the least category but what if the four uh, what if the two mark questions came uh, came from that topic only then you can't write uh, in the options that yeah this was the least weighted topic and but you are asking it for two marks no nothing can happen except for attempting that and scoring the good good marks okay so this is how you should always this is what you should always keep in mind that you can always prepare something on the basis of the weightage and you can prepare a strategy but you should be aware that if you are aiming for a great rank you should give equal importance to each and every topic and not just each and every topic but each and every type of questions okay so that's what we are going to discuss then you can always uh, sort the uh, sort the topics on the basis of the personal strength like something that are improvable like you are not that much good at it but if you give it time you can definitely improve upon them and second on the improved ones that you are already good at these topics so then there's no point again again and again uh, revising those topics only leaving the ones that you are not comfortable with behind right you should give each and uh, you should give equal importance to each and every topic that's what i am trying to explain you so why i am so much confident about what i am telling because as you know that i am pursuing my masters from iit bombay and iit Bo at iit bombay there are people ranging from all india rank 2 to all india rank uh, to all india rank 80 i guess so or each and every person that i sit in my class with they have gone through each and every aspect of this exam right they have been a beginner in this exam and they have scored a two digit rank in this as well so that's why i have observed them and i know that yeah what's their mentality is and what's my what my mentality has been while uh, while preparing for gate so that's why i'm sharing this with so much confidence with you so that you you do not make the mistake that most of the people make which is just focusing on some topics and leaving the other topics behind okay so yeah now coming to the uh, coming to the actual subject which is programming and data structure so from now on whatever we are going to discuss would be specific to this subject okay the types of questions asked the importance that should be given to the topics and so on so always keep in mind that you need to make a strategy as per the subject that you are studying so there is no universal strategy okay one strategy that might work for a particular subject might not work in another subject okay so as you know gate is an exam which consists of variety of subjects there might be subjects that you are good at there might be subjects that you are not good at so you need to make a schedule or a planning for subject basis not just a universal strategy universal strategy can be made as a goal like this much you need to cover within a month or within a week but having a separate strategy that works for each and individual subject should be made okay so for example uh, you you can just relate it's not important that each and every one should follow but programming and data structures is logical based subject that there is some logic involved when you are studying it but let's come to the other other subject which is like uh, for example computer networks so in computer networks certain things are fixed like ipv4 header header size and all those things so you cannot just uh, you cannot just uh, keep means you cannot just uh, implement the same strategy there are you getting it like if you have made something for a logical subject you cannot implement it as directly as into the uh, learning based subject so this is what i am trying to explain you that for each and every topic and each and every subject you should have a proper schedule or a proper plan like when you are comfortable studying it what should be the target for this month each and everything should be topic uh, each and everything should be subject wise okay so then only you will get good marks in 
the actual gate exam because gate exam won't ask you uh, are you good at operating system should i ask you major portion from operating system no right all they care about is getting the overall good marks okay so getting two marks in operating system and zero in programming doesn't make sense what you should make sure is you get maximum marks in the actual gate exam which can come from each and every subject okay so having this preconceived notion of yeah i i am good at operating system and score 100% in that so let's uh, let's leave programming data structures behind that doesn't work if you are planning to get a good rank okay otherwise i can just tell you on the basis of your luck you can get 40% marks and you will definitely get a college but if you are planning to get a very great rank which i have always thought about like i have never compromised with any topic okay so that's why i am trying to explain you what what your mentality should be because i know that i have also been a student right so i know that yeah some sometimes you just don't like studying a particular subject and you are good at a, another subject and you just keep studying that and uh, that only but what if you score 100% marks in that subject but the remaining subjects are left behind okay so that won't help so this is what i am trying to explain you that always focus on each and every subject and each and every topic no matter what you are good at but you should be able to attempt each and every type of question that that is asked in the gate exam okay so now comes to the resources so selection of resources for the subject so i have also been a student right so i know that yeah there are multiple types of resources available lots of resources lots of question banks and each and everything is there and it might be difficult for a person to understand yeah what should one focus on and what is not that important okay so believe me many people will have many different perceptions so let's take example of my batch at iit bombay so as i mentioned that they all have scored great ranks but some have uh, some have referred to nptel lectures some have referred to their handwritten notes some have referred to reference books and each and every of each and every one of them have got a good rank okay so what i'm trying to explain you is you should pick one resource and just stick to it and and uh, and prepare from it thoroughly rather than studying a bit from here studying a bit from that that doesn't help why because it might happen that you have skipped one subject uh, skipped one topic from each and every resources okay so that should not happen you should have a primary resource like your handwritten notes at vidya lankar or anything like that means whatever you are comfortable with so vidya lankar provides you with the with the perfect material right so you can keep it as a primary resource and then you can refer to other open source available or te reference textbooks for some particular subjects that you are not comfortable with that you don't think uh, that you have got from the lectures right so in that case you can refer to that particular topic from some other book but it should not mean that you are planning that i'll cover each and every topic from reference book and each and every topic from other other lecture notes and vidya lankar notes that i personally believe that that's not possible because you have a very limited time and you should focus on getting the maximum out of it rather than just being a breadth first search right you might know that there's a breadth first and there's a depth first right so depth first won't help you like you are going into uh, sorry breadth first like just keeping the breadth at every topic won't help you but going into depth of every topic will definitely help you okay so this is what you should focus on so ultimately you should just have a one primary source of notes that you should refer to and then in case of some particular topics you should refer to some other notes that's not a problem okay so list of reference books so these two reference books i uh, means i have came across uh, when i used to prepare as well but i didn't refer to them much because of the uh, shortage of time i just uh, used to refer to my own notes self made handwritten notes and that used to be of great help to me so but these two books which are the c programming language edition 2 by brian brian and dennis richi and second is classic data structures which is again edition 2 by debasis samanta okay so these two reference books i believe that are of great help but again believe me you will not get a lot of time to go through each and every page of these books what you should do is you should refer to your vidya lankar notes or notes that you are preparing and then for selective topics that you haven't understood you should refer to this books or any other open source material okay yeah now let's come to the overview of the subject so first of all make a list of topics 
now there are various topics in each and every subject okay whatever you pick if you pick os there are lots of topics within that if you pick uh, programming data structures there is a lot uh, there is a list of topics within it so what are the types of topics some are important topics now you should understand that the word important is very relative like on the basis of uh, 2020 paper there will be certain type of topics that are important on the basis of 2019 paper some different set of problems might be important or topics might be important on the basis of 2015 paper some other topics might be important so this is just a reference point like you can decide which topics are important on the basis of the past 10 to 15 years question papers not just 5 years or just 2 years okay because that won't give you a cumulative analysis what you should be focusing on is a 10 to 15 years of gap and even then i would definitely recommend you to to believe that each and every topic is equally important because gate exam will not ask you whether you are good at this topic or not all all they care about is can you solve the question that they have given in the gate exam okay if you can solve it that's good if you cannot solve it you are losing that mark as simple as that they won't ask you are you good at topic oh you are not good at this topic so we will not give you question from this topic right this doesn't happen and there are skippable skippable uh, skippable topics okay based on previous year questions and analysis but as you know that i have already explained you that there is nothing called as skippable topics there are some out of syllabus kind of topics which, which you can definitely neglect but there is nothing called skippable topics from my point of view i have just written this point so that you can relate that yeah sometimes you think that i can skip this topics and so on so that's why i mentioned here but i don't believe that there is any topic that should be skipped okay so not recommended for getting a great plan unless you believe in luck okay so if you believe in luck then i would definitely recommend you to yeah yeah if you are lucky then you can leave certain amounts of topic and uh, gate exam will never ask those questions okay but if you are aiming for a great rank each and every topic should be equally important and you should give equal importance to each and every topic okay so for toppers each and every topic is equally important as during admission no one ask you which subject you scored well in right so they will not ask you oh you were not good at this subject so we will not take this subject into consideration will consider uh, other marks and will give you admission on that basis no that doesn't happen okay so always keep these things in mind this is very important like lots of people ask me what are the important topics if i do this only will that be helpful if i skip these topics will that be will that be helpful what if i tell yes but then gate ex gate ask from those topics then what will i do right i will not be able to help you get admission right all you need to uh, all you need to focus is on is your preparation and make sure that you focus on each and every topic thoroughly okay yeah so major topics in programming and data structures so let's come to the uh, this particular subject so there is programming in c which is a very vast topic again i have just written the simple programming in c there are recursion based topics so there are types of recursions like head recursion tail recursion then nested recursion one recursion call uh, calling another recursion and that recursion itself is calling this recursion so there are various types of recursions arrays arrays stacks queues linked list trees binary search trees binary heaps and graphs okay so these are the major topics that i believe that one should be thorough with which consists of programming and data structures as a whole okay So yeah, let's in between have a check whether the screen and everything is visible or not. So am I audible and the screen is visible? Any one of you can confirm. Okay, great. Thanks for confirming. So are you, uh, so have you got what I have told so far? Like, are you are you trying to uh, means are you able to understand what I am trying to convey, or it's just that I am. speaking at my own pace is this is the pace okay like or shall i speed it down or something like that whatever you are comfortable with uh if you have any specific query you can ask like pertaining to the speed or anything okay great so yeah let's continue okay so now let's understand each and every uh, like the strategy to attempt each and every type of question so so once again uh, this comes with the terms and conditions like the star option that when i am mentioning some strategy that is something that i have used right it doesn't mean that you will also feel comfortable with that strategy and you should 
use that strategy i'm not forcing you to use that strategy what i'm trying to tell you is you should have your own strategy and stick to it some might face uh, some might believe that yeah uh, solving questions in this manner is uh, way more way much helpful for them some may think no this doesn't work for me this is the way that i will solve it so whatever your strategy is you should practice using that strategy only and then and then get uh, get better and better with that strategy okay so what i'm telling you uh, what whatever i will tell you after this is something that i believe is very much helpful in general you can try that out if you don't think that it is helping you you can just uh, make a strategy of your own and you can uh, use that okay or you can practice that so yeah let's come to the recursion type of questions okay so recursion as i mentioned there are there are various types of recursion based problems are some are head recursion some are tail recursion and so on so what what i am going to discuss here is in general how one should attempt a recursion based problem okay so in gate exam if you if you face uh, that uh, recursion code is given that uh, fibonacci codes for for example what is fibonacci of 10 suppose they ask so how you will attempt this question and recursion based problems are very easy to understand they will give you a certain code which is making a recursive call and they will ask what is the value of function of 10 and you need to just put 10 value and make a function call and get to the particular answer okay so that's what i believe this strategy will definitely help you so first of all i always try to make the recursion stack of tree all tree okay so all of you know that recursion uh, makes use of a stack memory that one call ca calls another call and the previous call is pending again another call and previous ca calls are pending and so on and once the final call is done they return this value and again they return this value and so on until the recursion stack is empty so this is how a recursion problem works in general no matter if it is tail recursion head recursion nested recursion doesn't matter they it will always make use of a stack and consecutive calls okay so this is what i am calling a tree what is a tree a tree is just a structure a tree of tree of function calls right i am i refer to uh, referring a tree as tree of function calls like function of like if you take fibonacci right fibonacci of n calls fibonacci of n minus 1 plus fibonacci of n minus 2 right so this is what i am talking about a tree that you need to make certain calls in a certain hierarchy and once this call is returned then this particular problem will be getting solved and this will return the value up uh, to the to the function call and so on and so forth the problem will be getting solved so always like this is what i believe and this has worked for me as i mentioned that uh, i scored each and every question correctly except for one one mark question right so this is the strategy that i have referred to always make use of a pen and paper as high chances of making mistakes in the order of function calls so if you are thinking this way yeah this will call this function of 5 so this is something pending in your memory then there is a function of 4 this is also pending in your memory and then you will make a certain kind of a mistake which which uh, you believe that you haven't made but yeah that would be a great mistake why because you are not sure whether this call should be executed first or this call or what was the value returned by that function call so always make a very clean and simple recursion stack or a recursion tree or while solving the paper, uh, while solving these questions in the actual gate exam as well and by meaning to solve this in actual gate exam you should start practicing this type from day itself from today itself you should be able to implement this strategy and try solving this way so that by the time gate exam comes you are very comfortable with this strategy and you will need a very less amount of time lots of people don't write on paper because they think that it will waste a lot of time for them right but does it really mean that wasting time is different from wasting marks i don't believe so because marks are the most important things like scoring great marks is the first priority then you should manage your time accordingly rather than you should keep that no i'll not waste time and that's why i'll i'll not this question this doesn't happen right so again always solve such type uh, such that you can confirm your answer by just looking at the solution that you wrote for the first time so make a proper recursion tree okay so this is a very important point and let me explain you why i have written this so many a time what will happen is you will forget something in between like you will not remember what call were you on like were you calling fibonacci of 5 or fibonacci of 4 what particular thing you were solving for right but what will happen once you have written it down you can always trace back to your actual problem and then you can continue from there 
rather than again solving it from scratch okay so this is why i have mentioned this point again let's consider a different scenario what if you are solving what if you are attempting this in gate exam but in between that you you uh, you think of some other question that you you have got the answer for and you leave this in between and then go to that question and attempt it and then you come back okay so in that case you should be in such a position that you can continue from that step rather than just solving those five iterations once again because it will only waste your time because you have confidently solved five iterations but again you are starting from scratch and this should not happen and this is only possible according to me when you have written it on a paper and you have made a proper recursion stack or recursion tree calling right so that you know yeah i was in this call and this is pending so i'll continue from here and then i can solve the complete question okay so this is very important while solving the recursion based problems now preferable ordering of various other topics that i believe should be followed so as simple as this arrays is something that gives you the basics of data structure in general so you should always start with this topic and believe me arrays strings all these topics are very uh, like they have very limited concepts involved means uh, there are very limited concept that array stores in consecutive manner uh, consecutive uh, memory locations and you can access the data members uh, access the data elements with uh, using index and arrays indexing starts from zero so array of zero refers to the first element array of one refers to the second element and so on apart from this means there are some small concepts but apart from this you just need to implement this logic so whenever they ask you if uh, this particular location is this what will what will be the location of the 10th element so all these questions are just implementation of the concept of array okay you just you don't have to remember the each and every concept of arrays there are very limited concepts but their implementation is huge okay and that's what you need to understand while learning this particular subject which is programming and data structures you need to remember believe me you need to remember very less amount of this subject but when it comes to application just using those limited concepts you can implement each and every question so again let's talk about linked list what how is a linked list different from array you can just store the elements in non contiguous locations like if you have a certain memory here certain memory there you can just create a link and you can utilize these two memory locations which is not possible in case of arrays but just on the basis of that you can relate each and every concept i am not telling you that it is this simple i know i have studied all these concepts but what i am trying to explain to you there are very limited concepts very very limited concepts but when you think upon it it can come in a huge variety of questions okay and that's what you should be prepared with while learning this subject don't learn it like don't remember that yeah array indexing starts from zero so yeah this is array of one array of two no just understand this subject which is programming and data structures it is it is one of the simplest subject if you focus on understanding and learning the concepts but if you try to learn this then it might be of a huge problem to you why because then you will have to remember fibonacci of 10 okay what is fibonacci of 10 you will re start remembering that no that is not needed all you should remember is fibonacci of n equals to fibonacci of n minus 1 plus fibonacci of n minus 2 as simple as that then if i give you fibonacci of 10 you will definitely calculate it if i give you fibonacci of 5 you will also definitely calculate that okay so this is just a simple example to explain you what what your mindset should be while while uh, while starting with a particular subject okay yeah so yeah uh, first focus on arrays then come to stacks queues and linked list so these three topics like belong to a, a certain frame so these are called like linear based uh, la linear data structures right then comes tree binary search tree binary heaps and finally graphs so this this is the in increasing complexity of the topics but what i am trying to explain you is always start from the basic ones because when you are good with basics you don't you don't have to remember that again and again then you are comfortable with those topics and then you can focus on the complex complex topics right but if you start with complex topics what usually happens is you lose interest in the interest in the subject because you think yeah uh, i have studied this through uh, this for one month and again i am left with no new concept but just a graph uh, just a basics of graph and then you will start doubting yourself because you have covered such a less amount of course with the with this much time but what if you have come up 70% of the course then that remaining 30% you will again solve with great pace why because you are highly confident about your pace that you are completing something right 
so motivation is not something that i'll tell you and you will definitely get it motivation is something that that your preparation will give you when you know that yeah you are good at this subject you have solved lots of questions in this then on your own you will be very much uh, motivated to solve the the questions that come in gate exam right okay so types of problems needs to be solved during preparation okay so pyq throughout this slides refers to previous year gate questions okay previous year gate questions test series questions and there are some extra questions so i would list down the importance in this manner only like first previous year questions then tests and then the extra ones so because why there is no limit of extra questions okay again there is no limit of test question you will give multiple tests and multiple types of questions will appear but previous year questions will give you certain sense like okay these types of questions are asked this types of complexity of questions is asked so you you will limit yourself within some certain limit okay uh, like certain range that yeah these types of questions are asked so first i'll focus on these types i'm not asking you to skip the remaining types what if in your gate exam this particular topic comes which was not not asked in previous year gate questions right but as you know that we computer science students deal with probability and probability is something that you can get from previous year questions like if this topic is getting asked multiple times there's a high probability that it will be asked again rather than being definite that yeah this will be asked again right so there's a difference so always first focus on the important topics now by important i mean that have been asked multiple times in the gate exam okay so this is called important topics but this doesn't mean that others are not important topics these are most important topics other are also important topics this is how you should think right okay so now let's understand uh, what extra extra problems are so extra problems are apart from previous year questions and apart from test series questions okay so there are various reference books study materials uh, which are available and workbooks or social media so there are certain people which keep posting 5 to 10 questions daily and you can solve them so these these corpus consists of the extra problems okay but what i am trying to explain you is always first focus on previous year questions because there are some types of questions which which doesn't even belong to the course but keep appearing in the uh, in other platforms right so this should not happen you should be highly focused about what concepts you need to cover okay so always keep a copy of uh, your syllabus in front of you so that you don't uh, you don't go off the track while solving a particular type of questions okay then test series help you understand the various ways that particular topic can be asked so as i mentioned array is a very simple topic but test series will help you understand how to solve this type of questions when a limited amount of time you, is available to you right because given 30 minutes each and every person can solve a particular question but test series help you understand how to solve that particular question within a certain time limit and that's one of the most important part which is managing your time during the gate exam and that i'm going to cover in the upcoming slide so yeah first focus on previous year questions then on the test series questions and then you can if you are left with time or you still think that yeah this is something that i should uh, more focus on then you can refer to some extra questions okay number of problems to be solved so again i have just included this topic in slides from student point of view i don't believe that there is a certain number of questions that you need to solve but i do believe that there is some limit of topics that you need to solve okay so you should cover at least 10 to 15 questions at least 10 to 15 questions from each and every topic then you can start uh, preparing again and again for those particular topics and you can solve more and more problems but you should at, at least attempt 10 to 15 from each and every small topic that that consists in the gate exam okay so you should have uh, you should always have a particular limit of questions that yeah this topic can uh, certain types of questions can be asked and this previous year questions will definitely help you to understand okay so based on weightage based on important topics per subject based on weakness in a particular topics and based on marks in tests okay so the first two topics as i mentioned that as a topper you should never focus on the word important topic okay each and every topic is important so let's skip these two points now let's come to the third point based on the weakness in a particular topic okay so how to understand that you are a weak in particular topic on the basis of your performance or on the basis of the questions that you are solving that even if you have understood that subject you are not trying uh, you are not able to attempt those questions okay so that's how you understand that you are weak in this particular topic and you need to attempt more and more questions in this topic okay so always 
uh, up to a certain threshold solve each and every topic equally but once you have understood that yeah i am comfortable with these topics but i am not comfortable with these topics then you can focus your attention on to those topics okay similarly happens with on the basis of the marks and tests so tests will also help you self analyze yourself okay so you will understand okay i am i have studied this a lot but again i am not able to solve this questions so i should focus more time solving this so rather than giving e equal equal time to each and every topic you should give less time to the ones that you are already good at but divert your time to the topics that you are not that good at okay so this is the major mistake that students do they keep solving the questions that they are comfortable with rather than what should they be solving right there are there will always be some topic that you are good at and that you are not good at so you should always take time from what you are good at and keep keep investing the time in what you are not good at then only each and every topic will be at a particular level for you and that should be the and that should be the case while attempting the gate exam okay okay strategy to excel in a particular subject so this strategy is in general not just for programming and data structures this is in general that applies to each and every subject so always have a self improvement chart what is a self improvement chart always keep a track of your performance on the basis of marks on the basis of the rank in the test series on the basis of the number of problems that you are solving the time required this is something that test series will help you they always keep a track of what was the time required in a particular subject and continuous revision so you should keep revising particular topic and revision why revision is important because practice makes it permanent okay so revision always helps you to get get more and more clear in a particular topic and yeah so uh, so always keep a track of how you are performing in a particular subject by just tracking your marks and each and everything your rank that you are getting okay so you are lacking behind in this topic and then you should be focusing on some other topic okay so has it been clear so far so has it been clear so far like whatever i i have explained are you getting it or it's just a bouncer like i'm just speaking to my myself only okay good what about others are you getting benefited okay great so yeah let's continue only two to three slides are left i think then we'll have questions like what should be done for particular cases okay so how to attempt in the actual gate exam so i call my strategy as a two pass strategy okay this is just a name that i have given to my strategy so my two pass strategy is start with the ones that you are sure about and the ones that will take less amount of time okay so suppose you are attempting the gate exam okay so this is how i attempt the gate exam so let's first talk about this subject programming and data structures just a minute okay so let's first understand programming and data structures then we'll talk about in general so start with the ones that you're sure about and the ones that will take less amount of time so what why i am keeping that less amount of time uh in that particular sentence is that there are certain types of questions that you are sure that you will be able to solve but they will take a lot of your time and that's why you might think that yeah you have wasted this much time and then you will panic and this should not happen okay so for example if i have asked you to calculate fibonacci of 15 okay so this is something that you know that yeah you will definitely solve you will solve fibonacci of 15 equals to 14 plus 13 then 13 equals to this this is and you will definitely solve this but it will take a lot of lot of, a lot of time okay this is just an example i am not scaring you that yeah you will be asked fibonacci of 15 no that doesn't happen i'm just trying to explain you what do i mean by taking more amount of time so there are certain questions that you are sure about that you will definitely solve this this is just this will just need multiple iterations of function calls and you will be able to solve it but they will consume lot of time and then you will lose your uh, you will lose your confidence and you will panic because you have invested lots of time in just solving this particular question okay so always start with the questions in programming and data structures that are very easy and you are comfortable with so that you can solve maximum amount of questions in the given particular amount of time okay then focus on the ones that you are sure about but will need more time okay what do i mean by that suppose fibonacci of 
this you are sure about that you can definitely solve fibonacci of 15 by just making certain function calls but it will require more amount of time so once you have solved all the small questions and you you are confident that yeah you have covered these these many marks in this particular subject then you can attempt the ones that will surely give you marks but will consume a, a lot of time as compared to the previous one then you should come to the uh, then you should focus on the ones which you are confused about between two options okay so this always happens like this used to happen with me as well that yeah you know that it can be one among these two options out of the four but you are not sure about which two so then you you might invest some more time and get to a particular conclusion right because now the chances is 50 50 rather than 25 percent initially it was 25 percent because there were four options but now you have eliminated two options it is same as the 50 50 of corn burning a karodpati right you know that yeah your answer lies in these two options only then you can just invest some more time during the exam and then you can finally conclude to a particular option so just investing this some extra time can give you two marks and and maybe a jump of thousand ranks right that might happen so that's why i have listed this this point as well finally attempt all the non negative mark problems because there is no harm in attempting them but remember attempt all the non negative mark problems which you were not able to solve in the first attempt so start with the ones that you are sure about this, this can also consist of the ne non negative marks problems okay so no matter what they are negative or they are non negative just start with the ones that you you know that you will definitely solve so no any type of questions can also belong to that category then come to the remaining ones which you are not sure about but yeah giving it a shot will not will be of no harm just write some option that you think can be correct uh, some answer not option because there are no options just some some particular number or just particular answer that you think is correct okay cool and finally if you are uh, uh, if you are still left with some time try to spend on the ones that you haven't attempted so this is very obvious like there's no point explaining this so once you know that yeah i'm not able to solve this but yeah let's give one attempt to this what if a uh, certain thing jumps to my mind that yeah i can solve it right now okay so now let's come to the two pass strategy for solving the gate paper okay so again this was a strategy that i followed it might not work for you but you should definitely try to give it a shot like you should at least try to attempt the test series with this strategy and if it still doesn't work then you can form a strategy of your own okay so first of all what is the logic behind this strategy the logic behind this strategy is that sometimes it happens that in the first attempt you are not able to solve a particular question but when you revisit that question you you have that certain state of mind that yeah now you can definitely solve this question and you will end up solving that question so believe it or not this has happened to me a lot of time during my preparation and during the gate actual gate exam as well at first attempt i was not able to solve that question so i just skipped it i moved on to the next one but when i solved the remaining questions so i was like mentally free that yeah i have attempted a lot of questions then when i came to that particular same question i was able to solve why because gate exam is not just about knowing a particular thing but about your mindset as well if you are in panic mode you will you will make mistake in the subject that you are comfortable with and if you have solved it previously then again you can make a mistake in that because your mind is in panic mode but when you're calm when you are in a positive attitude you will definitely be able to solve something that you think you are not you will not solve okay and this believe me always happens not not right now but in some time you will definitely uh, means definitely understand this when you will attempt gate uh, when you will attempt test series you will see yeah this was a question that i know but i was not able to attempt in the exam why because of the time management and because of the exam pressure if i would have given you as an mcq test you will definitely solve this but when that same question appears in the gate exam you are not able to solve this why because you are always worried about oh these many questions are remaining this many this much time is left what will i do what what should i do right now and this is called a panic mode and believe me people don't get benefited by from the panic mode they always get benefited from the positive mindset and from the confident confident attitude so okay? attitude okay and that's what this two pass strategy is all about so in pass one take the complete gate paper like it is on computer screen so just consider each and every question and solve all the questions that you are sure about and are doable in less time same as the one that we have 
uh, that I've explained here. This builds up confidence and positive mindset, which are, believe me or not, some of the most important ingredients. Why? Because I have told you, your mindset defines whether you will be able to solve this question at a particular instance or not. If you are in panic mode, you will not solve it. But if you are in calm state, you, you can solve that now. Okay, and this is what happens and mark the ones that are doable, but will take more amount of time. So as, as I've explained, recursion based questions are one of the ways when it comes to programming and data structures that you know that, yeah, you will solve this, but it will take time. So just mark it in circle or anything. Uh, so if you are on a computer screen, there's an option to mark it for uh, mark it for later uh, reference, right? Something like that. So mark it for review. There's an option for market for review. Just just mark it for review so that you know that this particular question is something that I can solve if I give more time to right? and never leave these questions unsolved because you can solve this provided you are left with time. OK. Now this is about past one. So what I mean by past one that go from the starting to the end of the paper is a past one. I'm not talking about past one means 50% of the paper part two means uh, past two means 50%. No, past one means 100% paper past two again means 100% paper, but with a different mindset. Now past one was about focusing on the quantity of the questions that you're solving. Okay. So once you have gone through each and every paper, now you know that yeah, your question revolves around these topics only. Now you can just forget each and everything that that was consuming your mind. Now you know that, yeah, these are the these are the subjects that I can solve. These are the subjects that I won't be investing my time in and so on. Then start with the past two from the start with the ones that you have marked for review. Start from the beginning and solve the doable that take more time. So as I mentioned, the previous past, you just mark them for reference. But now you will again start from the beginning and will give them time to get those marks. OK, then solve the non negative marking questions as I've explained it before only that there's no harm attempting attempting the non negative marking questions because believe it or not even in the NAT type of questions you, you will be confused between two or two answers like by this approach it is you are getting two by this approach so there are 50 50 percent chance so why not at least attempt it because of losing your marks but what if your answer was correct right? so there's no point missing those questions and finally if you're left with time Selectively pick up some questions that have high probability of get called among the remaining ones. Okay. Okay. So by this, just a minute. Yeah. So by this, this strategy will help you to grab the maximum of your gate exam paper and this is something paper in one go what what's the problem with that i'll explain you suppose there's there are very very easy problems at the end there are five problems which consume 15 minutes or let's uh, let's say five questions that will consume 10 minutes like two minutes per question they are at the they are at the end but what if are wasting a lot of time at the beginning only, right? Then no matter what, those questions are also giving you two marks. These questions are also giving you two marks, but you have wasted all of your time in this and you have left those questions as it is. So here you are investing five minutes in a question, but there is a question sitting for you, which will only take two minutes and you can definitely solve this. So this should not happen. And believe me, it me it or not, this has happened to me and lots of my friends. And this is the major difference. Okay. So yeah, this is all I can tell you about this strategy. If you have any problems, we can just talk about it. So remember, solving more questions doesn't mean getting more marks, but solving questions correctly does. So this is the important thing that you should build in your mind. If if someone is attempting, there are 65 questions, I believe. So if someone is attempting 60 questions, it doesn't mean that he will get more marks than a person attempt, uh, attempting 50, uh, 50 questions. Why? Because attempting 50 questions with a hundred percent accuracy or 95% accuracy can give you more marks when you are attempting 60 questions with just 70% accuracy, right? So accuracy plays a very important role. And that's what you can learn from the example that I've given you at the beginning that I've lost 1.33 marks with just one question. Why? Because of accuracy. If 
if i would have attempted correctly i would have got 1.33 marks extra right and this is just because of the accuracy and this is the topper's attitude to win the game just remain in the game so what do i mean by that there will be lots of time that you will think that yeah this is not doable i am not i am not i am not made for this exam i'll never get a good rank each and every one of us not just me not just all india rank 50 not just all india rank 30 even all india rank 2 or 3 they also get the same types of self doubts that yeah i might not be able to solve this question in the exam i am not good at this particular subject but at the end each and everything should be left on the day of the exam you should not worry about it from right now all you should be focusing on right now is to get the maximum out of your efforts like just to get the maximum benefit out of a particular subject just to get more and more accurate in that rest of the things will be getting decided on the day of the exam and that you should not worry about okay yeah with this thank you and all the very best for your exams and yeah i believe that this was really very very helpful for you and you can post certain queries if you have in the chat section that i'll definitely be glad to solve so we are left with just 5 and a half minutes so yeah let's utilize that accordingly so first of all was this session helpful to you like did it give you more perspective than you came up with okay that's great so can some of you mention the takeaways like the major takeaways that this session helped you with so believe it or not i can definitely tell that you always used to think that yeah some topics are skippable some are not that important topic but if there is one thing that you should take from my session is if you are aiming for a great rank each and every topic should be made equally important and you should spend time on take away time from other activities or from the topics that you are good with and invest them in the topics that you are not good with right and then you will definitely get a very good rank if you focus on this strategy any other queries or any other takeaways that you would like to mention yeah so you should definitely definitely focus on one material uh, that is with the lankar notes why because what if you you focus on 10 different materials okay what will happen is you will spend a lot of time but your but your uh, knowledge it will not increase much why because the concepts are very limited but it is about solving most of the questions so always refer to your own notes or the uh, coaching notes and then you should just use other materials for some selective purpose then only you can take the many, uh, maximum benefit out of it otherwise what you will do is you will just keep learning those 10 topics from this book then from this book then from these notes and then you, uh, your entire time will be uh, will be going wasted in this this only rather than covering the remaining topics okay just a minute yeah so accuracy two pass strategy okay so this is your take away right i'm glad i'm glad that you focused on this part and i hope that it will definitely benefit you most of the time when i'm doing some topic i am good at it but after some topic i do not have that grip in topic yeah so this is the stage so you are not alone let me tell you each and every person who prepares for any exam not just gate exam has faced this so why this happens because your uh, your memory is about uh, consuming the topics that you have learnt uh, means least uh, what i can say recently okay so least recently used kind of a strategy means the topics that are of least uh, recently used they will be getting banished so this is the important role played by revision okay so revision is something that you should do which will which will help you keep a track of all those knowledge and all those uh what whatever concepts you have learned so for example this is what i believe if you have spent around if you have spent around uh, one month studying a particular subject then 
when you will revise it again it might get broken down into just 10 days then again if you re revise it it will be getting broken down into just three days and finally for the gate exam you will be able to revise it in just one day or within just hours why why this happens because you have gone through it multiple times so now there's no need for you to remember a, a plus b whole square is a square plus 2ab plus b square right now you know that now there's no need for you to again write it 10 times so this is the work that you should do before then only revision should be done like just attempting it again and again and after some time just revise it after a long means after some some gap okay so this is what you should do always this this will always happen when you are focusing on some some subject the other subject will vanish from your mind so that 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 is what i'm trying to tell you first focus on one thing but keep revising the remaining part of it as well okay so then you will definitely getting overcome this problem so many topics which one should revise first i'm getting confused yeah so means this is what the planning comes into action right so there are certain topics like programming and data structures if you have once understood it once you have understood how to uh, like the functionalities of a stack the functionalities of a queue i know that you will nef uh, never never uh, you will never uh, feel feel the need to revise it again and again okay and this will come with with the uh, consistent efforts okay so this is not just for you right it's not just that you are getting so many subjects and remaining people are getting less subjects than you know each and every one has the same some same amount of syllabus and each and every one will have to give those many efforts okay so you cannot change the syllabus but you can definitely put in more efforts and more time so just utilize your time efficiently just make a particular strategy that yeah i'll not solve recursion based problems again and again because i know that i'll i'll just make a decision tree and i'll be able to solve it so don't revise it again and again just invest that time in some other subject right which which will require uh, more, most of the revision so this is just an example for you to understand i hope that you uh, that you have got the answer for your question okay great yeah sure no problem just just perform well and help yourself like that would be the best thing that you can reward yourself with with a great rank and believe me like strategy like as as i mentioned i totally believe in that quote like planning a uh, failing to plan is planning to fail why because there are smart, lots of smart people who are not good at planning and that's why they face this problems of revision and each and everything why because they don't know if they have studied the subject when they should be revising it but when you have when you have made a particular strategy in mind that yeah if i am studying this for a particular day then i'll i'll revise it after a week and then i'll re revise it after two weeks and so on so then you will be confident about yeah there is some plan and i'll just follow it okay so this is what i used to do i used to make a plan of each and every day means first i'll used to make a plan of each and every month then to achieve that month goal i i, I used to make it into four weeks then to achieve those each of the week i used to prepare it day wise so this is what you should do as well according to you around which month should entire syllabus be completed with one to revision cycle okay this is again very subjective question means some people just cover it within four months and some people cover it within a year so i don't think that i would be a better person to answer this but what i'll tell you is don't wait to think means never think that there will be a certain time that you will be comfortable with this topic okay this should go hand in hand suppose if i give you one year to study data structures and uh, programming and data structures even that one year you will you will feel that it is very less why because there is no end to these topics right so what you should do is you should just build your own confidence that yeah i have covered this much concept then i should i will be able to revise it i'll not focus on uh, on the negative aspects that yeah this is this should also be this is also remaining that is also remaining just focus on some topics and keep revising them uh, them in continuous manner rather than waiting for a day when your entire syllabus will be completed okay so this is a continuous thing that when your particular subject you are done with then uh, with the subject that you are learning as of now just revise the previously done subject and so on so this is the cycle that i am talking about uh i hope that uh, you you will be able to follow this and it will it will be of benefit to you
thanks yeah sure how much time you used to give for practicing okay uh, not to demotivate you guys uh, don't think that yeah i am you are not giving that much time so you are you are left behind but means as i mentioned that uh, uh, i used to prepare uh, means i used to manage the college placements activities as well as each and everything so i used to give like around 10 to 12 hours a day to the studies so that that's what i used to do means i was laser focused at it and my aim was just to get into iit bombay no other uh, no other college so i knew that yeah this is the effort that it requires and if i need to get this reward i need to put in those much efforts so i never used to compromise with my efforts and that's why i think that i am able to tell you all those strategies okay so yeah 10 to 12 hours i used to give in the last to six months not on the daily basis obviously i am not a robot i am also human activities okay so this is this used to be my mindset that at least eight to six hours when you are facing college activities or college exams but never break never leave behind any uh, any studies for something else at least as of study for that particular day okay always this should happen uh, i hope that i have answered your question so this again differs from person to person i am not asking you to study that much whatever you should be confident about it if you are giving six to seven hours be so much focused that take the uh, major benefit out of it okay so i was not that good at studies right i used to give lots of effort then i used to get get uh, get uh, then i used to understand it so that's why i used to get lots of efforts and now i i can i can do that quickly okay that's it uh, so I, I hope that uh, this uh, this session very much helpful to you all the very best and yeah uh, i wish you that you get whatever college or whatever rank you are looking for and with making a proper strategy i believe that each and every one crack the gate exam with a two digit two digit rank so just to win the game just remain in the game right you will definitely get what you are looking for okay all the very best hey guys hope you have found this session very helpful to get access to more such content do subscribe to my youtube channel where i keep discussing such topics also you may download the vidya langar app where I'll be taking such live sessions in near future. And if you have any queries pertaining to such topics or any guidance related topics in general, do mention it in the chat section where I would be ready to help you out. Thank you.